This storm is relentless. It just won't stop. For the past 30 hours, it has maintained a wind speed of 185 miles per hour. That's unprecedented. It has never happened before. We realized that um, the thermodynamic limit uh, for this, the hurricane wind speed, which is something that's fairly robustly developed today, uh, must go up as you warm the climate. We've known that now for you know, close to 35 years. So you expect to see more storms at the very high end, and there is evidence that indeed the frequency of the high end events are going up. When you go back in time to these times when sea surface temperatures are extremely warm, these systems that form in the tropics can propagate up to the you know, polar regions. Last interglacial, the sea level was about three to nine meters higher than sea level is today. The global temperature was only uh, slightly warmer than today. So very similar uh, in many ways and kind of shows what may lie in store for our current interglacial, especially with increased climate forcings. There's evidence of powerful superstorms at about that time, powerful enough for giant waves to toss 1,000 ton mega boulders onto the shore in the Bahamas. Some scientists think these boulders may have been tossed by a tsunami, but we present multiple lines of evidence that the boulders and other geologic features are best explained as the result of superstorms. The boulder deposits on North Duluth are somewhat unique. Um, they're kind of a localized condition uh, where the geometry offshore, uh, especially the seafloor geometry, uh, is just right that uh, waves coming off the, the North Atlantic get focused towards the coastline. With higher sea levels during the last interglacial, that allowed uh, portions of the sea cliffs to get broken off and uh, shoved up onto the coastlines. The boulders are, are interesting and, and fascinating um, just because of their sheer size, but it's these, these other deposits um, that are, are far more pervasive and uh, widespread throughout the Bahamas. And we find those uh, at elevations uh, in the Turks and Caicos up to 30 meters above uh, sea level. Um, and then on Eleuthera, north Eleuthera, uh, there's a location where they're up to 43 meters above present day sea level, several tens of meters above sea level at the time. These deposits that are left behind in the Bahamas and Bermuda are, are indicative of much, much stronger storms than, than anything we've seen in the present day or, or in historical time. In the sense of hurricanes as we define them today, they, they, they be a, a different animal. At the end of this century, if we continue on a business as usual path, uh, we're talking about eight to 900 parts per million levels of CO2, which is about three and a half times uh, the pre-industrial levels of CO2. You have to go back 35 to 40 million years in the past before you reach carbon dioxide levels uh, of, of three and a half times uh, pre-industrial levels. And one of the things that I'm very interested in is the formation of hurricanes and superstorms that could occur when we enter these sort of warm regime. Time periods. The larger issue, the issue making hurricanes more destructive, is sea level rise caused by climate change and a warming planet. Every flood is deeper, bigger and more damaging because of the sea level rise we've already had. In the last century, the sea rose at least eight inches and the rate has been accelerating since the 1990s. What we wanted to do was to really try to do a long-term study to see how flood risk has changed in New York City over time due to both changes in tropical cyclones in a changing climate and also due to the rising sea levels that we're seeing in that area. Although we do tend to have stronger and potentially larger storms in the future, the storms are actually staying further away from the city. They're a bit further out to sea than what we've seen uh, in the modern climate. And so there's a bit of a track shift going on there. Of course, we do expect uh, a, a fair amount of sea level rise in the future. And we found that when we do add sea level rise back into the picture, we see a pretty significant increase in flood risk for the city. The 500 year storm before the pre-industrial era was about a 2.25 meter flood or about 7.4 feet flood 
then as we move forward, we see that this type of a flood becomes about a five-year event by 2030 to 2045. And that's driven primarily by the rising sea levels that we see in New York City.